So I've had this OLED monitor for nearly a year now, and the biggest question that I always get revolves around some form of, has it suffered from burn-in yet? <laughs> nice. So as you guys could see from my sub count, I was not sent this monitor to test or review. I had to buy it myself nearly a year ago. But if that is something you want to change, then it would be greatly appreciated if you would hit that subscribe button and like this video. Let's talk about the technical specs about this monitor. Now, as I'm talking, I'll be showing some examples of that I previously posted. But on one side, you have the OLED Alienware 34 inch. And right next to it was my previous monitor, the, o the IPS 34 inch from Alienware with all the same specs. The only difference was one was OLED, one was IPS, one was 120 Hz, one was 165. But the point of this is to really show you a color comparison and the difference that it makes, especially in darker scenes in a darker room where the blacks are really gonna stand out a lot more when it comes to color accuracy of the monitor. So it is a 34 inch ultra wide from Dell Alienware. It has 3440 by 14p resolution. It is a curved screen, 165 Hertz refresh rate, which makes it incredible for gaming, QD OLED panel, which is the main selling purpose of this monitor and what makes it extremely more expensive than its IPS counterpart. Now, I don't wanna to get too deep into the different panel technologies because if you're watching this video, you really wanna see how the OLED has held up over the past nearly a year. Every screen has pixels on them and the number of pixels depend on the resolution of the monitor. The higher the resolution, the more pixels. So a standard full HD screen is gonna be 1920 by 1080. We have 2560 by 1440, 3440 by 1440, and so on and so forth. Each screen has millions and millions of pixels on them and that these pixels show the individual colors to represent the image. However, these pixels need to have light passing through them so that we could see them. Now, most screens will have different backlight zones behind the screens and will light up depending on what image is on the screen. If you have one zone that's turned off and the other zone that's on, you can have light bleeding from one zone into the other, which restricts the other zone from being as dark or as sharp as possible. OLED panels, each individual screen has its own light. So if you need a screen in a game or a movie or anything that's really, really dark, then that pixel will just turn off its light and you cannot get darker or a better black screen than with zero light. So you have the absence of light, which means complete darkness, right? So if that pixel is completely off, you're gonna get the truest black possible, which is why OLEDs have the best color accuracy out of all the different monitors that are available at the moment. Now, just as traditional screens have the downfall of having light bleed into different sections of the zone, OLED panels also come with their downfall. So if you have an image that has been on the screen for a long period of time and has not changed, that light has been on for a long period of time and the color hasn't changed, then that image is now prone to being burnt into the pixel. And we've seen that in the past when OLED was a new technology or LCDs had just come out, right? Where someone would be playing a certain game or watching a show with a certain overlay for such a long period of time that that overlay, like their health bar or inventory or map will get burnt into their screen. And that's because the image hasn't changed. It's been the same constant image on that screen. So it's allowed the light to warm up on the pixel and the image just gets burnt in. And that's where we get the term burn in. Now, technology has come a long way since the initial launch of these OLED panels, and with features like panel refresh and pixel refresh, we're seeing a lot less burn-in than we used to see before. And although it has kind of been prevented in that sense, there is always a risk of burn-in happening to an OLED panel, just like there's a risk of IPS having tremendous backlight bleed and TN panels having horrible viewing angles and color accuracy. Now, the good news is, after nearly a year of using this monitor daily, I have not suffered from any burn-in. Now, there's multiple reasons to that. One is I don't play a specific game for a long period of time anymore. Now I'm seeing myself play more of a variety of games and I really enjoy gaming on this monitor. By the way, gaming on an OLED panel is definitely an experience that you need to experience. So lounging back and just playing Cyberpunk or Red Dead Redemption or even more competitive shooter like the finals, it's, it's just a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying gaming again on this ultra wide and replaying games that I've played in the past like Red Dead or The Witcher and Cyberpunk, which is on my second go around now. And the other thing is I use this monitor for a variety of general uses from video editing to working productivity to consuming movies and content to games. There are so many things that I use this monitor for that it's only normal that something is shifting all the time. I'm not stuck on a static image, so the chance of burning is less and less. So here are some tips and tricks. If you did just get an OLED panel or plan on getting an OLED panel and you want to prevent burn in as much as possible if that is something you're worried about. First off, my taskbar setting is set to automatically hide taskbar when not in use. This is something that I think everybody should have on because when you're not using the taskbar, it is just taking up real estate on your screen for nothing. The taskbar will not appear on my screen unless I drag my mouse all the way down and call up the taskbar. Now, this prevents the taskbar from being on the screen constantly the entire period of using the monitor, which will prevent burn-in. Second, although you're seeing it in the background right now, 
I don't usually have wallpaper, wallpaper engine running when I am using my computer. Obviously, I will either be gaming or watching content, so there's no point of having resources being used in the background. I usually only turn it on when I'm either taking a picture of my setup, a video, or having it on in the background. Thirdly, when the message on my monitor pops up that, hey, it's time to do a panel refresh because you've used the monitor for a prolonged period of time, I just go ahead and do it. It says it takes about, what, four to eight or six to eight minutes to do it. So get up, grab yourself a cup of coffee, go touch grass, pretend to satisfy your wife. It doesn't take that long anyway. And by the time you come back, your panel is now refreshed and you have a better chance of not having burn-in in the future. Finally, when I'm finished using my PC for the day or for the night, I simply turn off my monitor. If I'm shutting down my PC, I turn off my monitor. Even if I'm leaving my PC on, I will shut off my monitor. That way I, will, I know for a chance there won't be an image that is stuck on the screen while I'm away. Here is the reality of it. This screen was not cheap. It cost me over $1,000 to purchase, and that was with a Black Friday rebate at the time. So I want to make sure that it lasts as long as possible and runs at peak performance as long as it possibly can. The good thing is Dell has a great three-year warranty on it. So if I do encounter any burn-in within those three years, I feel comfortable knowing I could just reach out to Dell and get it either exchanged or repaired or whatever it is. But even that's a hassle to go through because you got to send them the monitor and then you're stuck without a screen. And I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that I prolong the life of it and delay any inevitable or potential burn in or risk to the panel that I can. So if you are thinking of getting a new monitor and you are debating if you should be getting an OLED panel or not, or you're waiting for better technology to come out, here's a couple things that I want to mention. I have been using an OLED panel for nearly a year now. I have had zero instances of even close to coming into burn-in when I was worried about my screen because I take the necessary steps to try and prevent that. Also, if you're waiting, if you're somebody who's waiting for better technology to come out and you're like, well, I'm not going to buy this year's model. I'll buy next year's model. I'll wait for CES next year. I'll see what's coming out. There is not a single point in time when it comes to technological advancements or technology that you bought something and it stayed the most innovative technology that there is. Even if you buy the highest high-end technology, the next day, or they're already working on the next best thing, and that's going to reduce the value of your best thing. But it doesn't mean it makes it bad. Just buy what you want to buy and enjoy it. As long as you enjoy it, it's not outdated. It's impossible to future-proof when it comes to technology. Just remember that. But once again, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you did enjoy, please subscribe, like this video, leave me any comments or questions that you might have about OLED panels or anything in general, and I will be happy to help you out. And with that being said, guys, I will catch you guys next time.